Hello everyone, this is Paul here again with MemberPress, and in today's video we're going to cover how to set up Authorize.net with your uh, MemberPress website. Now, Authorize.net is available in the Plus or Pro plans of MemberPress, or if you are an older uh, legacy user and bought uh, back when MemberPress Developer Edition was around, uh, it also is supported in the older MemberPress Developer Edition. Uh, but for most of uh, the newer customers, uh, you will need, again, Plus or Pro to make use of the Authorize.net payment gateway. So once you've installed MemberPress, you've set up some memberships, and uh, you've maybe even set up some other payment methods like I have here. You can see I've got a pay by check, and I've also got a pay with PayPal option. But now I want to add an option for my members to pay me uh, with their credit cards using Authorize.net. So I'm going to go ahead and click the plus arrow here. And we're going to choose authorize.net as the payment method. And I'm going to call this pay, uh, actually let's just call it uh, credit card. This name here is the name that your customer will see when they go to check out. So for example, my customers will see pay by check or pay by PayPal or credit card. Now it's important to follow all of these steps as failing to follow them may end up, well excuse me, will end up with your uh, transactions not being properly recorded on the member press side. So the first thing we're going to do is set up our API login ID then we'll copy our transaction key and our signature key and we'll get these three from Authorize.net and we're going to paste them here into the member press settings. So once you're logged into your Authorize.net account, you'll click on Account tab over here on the right. And we want our API credentials and keys. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And it shows you your login ID right here. So we're going to copy that first. And we'll paste it in. And to get a transaction or signature key, you'll come down here and create a new one. So let's start with our transaction key first. And uh, I, in this case, I am going to disable my old transaction key immediately. Click Submit. And it's going to ask you to go through kind of a two-step uh, verification here uh, in most cases. So I'm going to just quickly pause the video while I go through that to save you the pain of watching that. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and verify my PIN, hit continue, and now you get this transaction key. I would certainly recommend copying this and pasting it in a note somewhere on your computer so you do not lose it. Otherwise, you'll have to regenerate it uh, should you lose it and you need, need to use it again. So we're going to go ahead and paste that into the transaction key setting here in MemberPress. And we'll go back. We're going to choose API credentials again. This time we're going to generate a signature key. Okay, and I've got to do this one more time. Okay, let me verify the pin. Okay, and again, we're going to copy this to clipboard. Now, you'll want to make sure you get rid of, you see when I copied it there, I added kind of this extra white space character here. We want to make sure we don't get those, so I'm actually just going to copy this manually myself. And again, I would recommend backing this up locally to a note so you do not lose it. And go ahead and copy it. Paste it in here. And then I'm going to double check just at the beginning and the end to make sure I didn't accidentally still copy one of those white space characters. And everything looks good. So that part is done. Let's go ahead and I'm going to set the catch up type to none. I recommend leaving it at none unless you have a specific reason to use uh, another setting, but I'm going to leave it at none. And if you're not sure what this setting is, uh, you can check the instructions down below this video and they should catch you up on uh, what this means. So now the last step is probably one of the more important steps. Um, so you want to make sure not to skip this, but copy this webhook URL from MemberPress here. Now this webhook URL is how Authorize.net is going to be able to communicate back to MemberPress and let MemberPress know if a recurring payment succeeds or if it fails or you know if a subscription 
uh, is suspended because of too many failed payments or you know something like that. So we definitely don't want to skip this step. So we're going to copy the webhook URL. We're going to go back to authorize.net. This time we're going to come down here to the webhooks section here at the very end. And you'll add an endpoint and give it a name. I'm going to call this the MemberPress webhook endpoint, but you can name it whatever is most convenient for you. And you'll paste in the webhook URL that we just copied from MemberPress. Definitely make sure it's active here. And we're going to send for all events and click save. And that's it. Now we've set up our webhook and authorize.net should be able to communicate back to our MemberPress website through this URL. Now if you ever change your URL in the future, for example if you change your domain name or if you change it from HTTP to HTTPS or www to non-www, um, go ahead and come in here and be sure to update your endpoint or the uh, your transactions may fail to, to track properly. So. Just keep that in mind if you do end up having to do a domain change or uh, even a slight tweak of your domain, um, such as adding HTTPS uh, or something like that in the future. Okay, so now that we've set up our webhook, we're going to come here and also copy our silent post URL. And I'm going to go back to account. Now, the silent post isn't super necessary to set up. Um, mostly it's useful for... Uh, if a subscription is um, has a failed payment, I believe authorize.net sends those through the webhook, or excuse me, through the silent post still. So go ahead and click submit there. And that's it. We've set up our silent post, we've set up our webhooks, and we've copied our API credentials back into MemberPress. So the last step we need to do here is just click update options. That will save our payment gateway here in MemberPress. And that's it. Um, the last thing I wanted to mention, uh, just as a troubleshooting issue, uh, sometimes after you set up authorize.net and you go to check out uh, your, your customers or you if you're just testing, you may see an error that you know the email address is required or um, a phone number is required or something like that. Um, most of the time that can be resolved by coming here to this payment form settings and then clicking on the form fields link here. And then I usually just come in here and uncheck the required on all of these. And that typically, uh, and then click submit to save it down here. But this typically will fix any uh, errors about required fields uh, not being sent over. Um, so I, I would recommend giving that a try if you're getting those errors. Um, and if you're not getting those errors, then really there's no need to come in here and tweak any of this. Um, but if you if you come in here and try this and you still get those errors, please reach out to our support team and we will uh, help you troubleshoot that a little further. Um, but that's it. So let's go ahead and look at a membership now. And we'll go ahead and edit it and you'll see that um, in the past I have enabled this customized payment methods option. So therefore I need to come down here and enable authorize.net as an option or it's not going to show up. And I want to make sure that it is the first option. So I'm going to drag it up here to the top and make sure that it is the default option. And then my customers can choose PayPal or uh, pay offline with a check uh, instead if they want. So let me go ahead and update this membership. And let's open this in an incognito window so that we can view this membership as if we are a guest on our own website. Uh, incognito, usually you're not logged in in an incognito window um, because your cookies from your incognito window are separate from uh, your main regular browsing window. So uh, anyways, let's scroll down here and you can see now we have our credit card as our first option. I can also choose to pay with PayPal or I can pay by check. So uh, it looks like everything is configured correctly. I would strongly recommend that you do uh, one or two test signups with your own credit card or get a couple of friends to do a sign up for you just to make sure everything works. Um, some interesting notes about authorize.net and I'll try to keep this quick because I know this video is getting a little bit long. Um, 
but if you're doing recurring billing with authorized.net, uh, MemberPress uses ARB to handle recurring billing. So you'll need to make sure ARB is enabled on your authorized.net account. And you can reach out to authorized.net support team uh, to get that enabled if you need help with that. So uh, make sure ARB is enabled. Now the, the interesting thing about ARB is when a subscription gets set up, authorized.net does not actually bill the first payment of that subscription um, until around, I believe, 2 a.m. Uh, Pacific time, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and so your customer may set up, you know, at noon, uh, set up their subscription at noon uh, Pacific time, but now they've got to wait till 2 a.m. for their first payment to process. Um, and so that's kind of a weird caveat with um, authorized.net. So what MemberPress does to get around that is what we do is we do a $1 authorization only charge to the credit card. And we don't actually capture that charge. So um, it's just a test to make sure the credit card's good. And if the authorization only is valid, then we'll set up the subscription and we'll give the customer a 24 hour grace period in MemberPress so that they can access the content right away because we've already verified that their card is good. Now, it is possible, it's not very common, but it is possible that even after verifying their card that the payment may still fail and then your customers ended up with a little bit of time on your site uh, basically without paying for it. Um, so again, that's a little ca caveat with authorized.net um, ARB that it, it does take a while to process that first payment. But we do everything we can to ensure that the credit card is good uh, before we set up that subscription and allow the customer to have access uh, on the website through that grace period. So we really don't see too many uh, uh, issues with that and I wouldn't be too worried about it either. So, um, but I think that covers most of the caveats with authorized.net. But as always, if you have any questions or concerns, please reach out to our support team and we were, we're always here to help and happy to help. So we hope you found this video helpful and we'll talk to you later.